Um, I, I'm of course honored. This is an amazing thing for me. Um, I want to describe as part of my youth. Diana. <laughs> um, I'm that other boy when I was young. I was the boy who never got chosen for sports, who flunked everything, who had to take the ninth grade over, who barely got through school, who was a poor reader, who fell through the cracks. And it's important that you know that. Uh, my parents were drunks. And I had a rough childhood. The, I'm going to keep the hat on for the overhead lights, and I'm trying to avoid you. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened to me, um, I was probably on my way to a bad life. What happened to me was a public library. Um, I used to sell newspapers in bars at night, and I found that if I waited until the drugs got juiced, I could sweep their change off the bars. <laughs> and I set pins in a bowling alley. We used to use child labor for that. Uh, I would set two alleys during leagues uh, and just go back and forth between the alleys. And I made $11 a week doing that. And I made about $9 a week uh, selling newspapers and scraping change. So I, $20 a week back when I was a kid was about what a man made. So I mean, I actually made a pretty good wage. Uh, but this was in a northern Minnesota small town. And uh, one night I was waiting for the drunks to get a little bit waxed up. And I walked by the library. I was a street kid, and I went to the library to get warm. I just wanted to get out of the cold. It was about 20 below. And I got in, and the librarian saw me walk in. She probably knew my parents. And she said, can I help you? And I said, no, I just want to get warm. I had my little bag of newspapers. Grand Forks Herald was the paper, by the way. She said, well, you like a library card. And nobody gave me anything. I was a street kid in Manila in 1946, 47, and 48, when it was still gutted by the Japanese. I had a rough childhood, I mean, I lived that way, and nobody handed me anything, nobody. I was cooking for myself and ironing my own clothes when I was seven. I mean, I had that kind of a life. And here this lady says, what I want, I says, yeah. I was just a smart Alex street kid. And she gave me a library card, and it had my name on it. And that little metal tag they used to have on them that would emboss, you know, that little, I remember the little metal tag in my name, and she spelled it right. Incidentally, the first book I published, they spelled my name wrong on the cover. <laughs> and I didn't dare tell them. <laughs> I thought they would take it back. <laughs> anyway, it was an amazing thing to have, this card. It, it, it made me somebody. I mean, I never, I never had friends in school. I was an outcast. Uh, never had a date until I was in the army. <sighs> Not sure that was a date. <laughs> I was never social. I was never. I, I lived in the woods. I, I fostered myself to do it. School was a nightmare for me, and I would just head for the woods. And I trapped and hunted and fished. And starting that was starting when I was 11 and a half years old. I just lived there. And a lot of that comes out in Hatchet and different books that I've written. But I really did those things. And here she gave me this card. She says, "You want a book?" I says, "Yeah." Well, I was a, not a good reader. I, I didn't read. And I remember the book she gave me, which just breaks my heart, because I would love to know. I cannot, I couldn't read it. Um, we lived in a scrubby apartment building, kind of a tenement thing, and, and I couldn't be in the apartment because my folks were bad. So I stayed in the basement, an old chair down there, an old easy chair with wires sticking through it, one of those old cushion things. And there was one light bulb hanging from the ceiling with that, how the filament showed. I mean, you get a tan off it. It's probably 180 watts or something. <laughs> and I sat down there with, with uh, this book, and I would stagger through three pages and then go back and have to read one. And I, and I just got through this book. It took weeks and weeks and weeks, maybe a month and a half. I felt duty-bound to read the book, and I took it to the back to the library. And um, she gave me another book. And this went on for three years. Uh, the last three years I lived in this town. Um, I, would, I would go back, she gave me a book, and the rest of my life was just shattered. It just went down and down and down with the alcohol from my parents, all those things happening. But this librarian kept kept me going with books. And I would go in, she'd hand me, you know, after, after for a while it was a book every two months and a book a month and a book every three weeks and a book two weeks and a book a week, two books a week. She had me reading. Finally it was, I'd go in and I'd get some adventure story and she'd slip in a Millville. She'd slip in a Dickens. And everything I've become, everything, is because of that librarian. I kept running away. Uh, at that time, there were no foster homes. They didn't take care of kids. And I, I, starting when I was 13, I'd run off. And they'd catch me and bring me back. I worked with carnivals. 
Um, I worked on farms. I did a lot of micro farm work, hoeing sugar beets with, uh, at the time they called them braceros or, or Mexican workers, uh, who I lived with, who took care of me. But all this time I read. And when I was 17, I forged my parents' signature on enlistment papers, <laughs> and I joined the Army. Okay, at that time, the Army was not a place where you could be all you could be. <laughs> <laughs> Frequently, judges would tell somebody coming into the army, no, you have a choice. You can go to prison or the army. Which one? And so sergeants in the army then were, were blunt, uh, crude and blunt and tough, and they could touch you. Apparently, they can't touch you anymore. They're not allowed to touch you, but then they could touch you. And this sergeant in Gross, G-R-O-S-S, -S, touched me really a lot in the first four days that I was in the army. <laughs> Actually, it was great. Um, somebody had thrown a cigarette butt on the ground. It wasn't me, although I smoked at the time. He said, pick it up. I said, no. <laughs> and it was like I violated the law of nature. <laughs> he said, what? And there were a lot of adjectives. And then, and then the word maggot. 